When you make superior stock, you make it with the intention that this dish or whatever dish that you're going to make with it is going to be the best version of the dish you're going to make. It's just understood that when you're making something with superior stock, a lot of people will be like, oh, it's not that the ingredients that went into this is just automatically expensive, but a lot of work went into one ingredient that is the foundation of this dish in general. I did a video on how to make superior stock the traditional way over a stove and with a regular burner. And it took about, you know, from start to finish, anywhere from six to seven hours, which is another reason why when people see that something is made with superior stock, they think, oh, this is the good sh well, I understand that, you know, not everybody has that kind of time to sit around to make one ingredient. So I set out to see whether or not it is possible or worth it to try to make superior stock in my Ninja Foodi, or you can do it in an Instant Pot, any kind of automatic pressure cooker. Now, even though I'm using my Ninja Foodi multi-cooker, I'm still going to be using my oven plus another pot to start a lot of these things off. It's not really a one-time like dump and forget it type situation as much as I wish it could be, but I'll get into the pros and cons of making it in this way later. For now, let's just get started. A superior stock has multiple sources of protein. In this case, I'm using smoked pork neck bones or neck ribs, regular neck ribs that are unsmoked, and a stewing hen. Stewing hens are hens that were initially around for the purpose of laying eggs, but have gotten so old that they could no longer lay eggs. Because they're so much older than fryers, like the chickens that you'll find at the grocery store for meat purposes, the meat is way more tough, but it is also way more flavorful, which makes it perfect for soup. Now, the only aromatics I'm gonna use for this are ginger and scallions, which I'm gonna portion into two. So I'm gonna take half of the ginger and scallions and I'm gonna roast them in ginger scallion oil, 350 to 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once the scallions have all pretty much charred up and the ginger has started to really dry, then it's ready. You wanna have both charred and raw aromatics for this stock because both of them have a different quality that they impart onto the stock when you add them to it. Now to me, this isn't so much a optional step, but I guess if there was as much of an optional step as there possibly could be, like this would be it. Here I am par cooking all of the raw or like unsmoked or uncured meats. I'm putting them all into a pot of room temperature water and then bringing that up to a boil and then letting them boil for anywhere from five to 10 minutes. What that does is it extracts some of the foamy proteins out of the bones and the meats of the pork and the chicken. The proteins are widely regarded as quote impurities, but they're just proteins. But that being said, they do cloudy up your stock and they do kind of impart like a sort of gamey flavor to it. So if you want that to be extracted out, it is worth it to poach all of your raw, uncured meats first. This isn't just a first step that I do for this stock. This is a first step that I do for any broth or stock that uses meat. You'll find in a lot of Asian culinary cultures, they do have this first step of removing the, quote, impurities from the meat in this way. Um, as I said before, those impurities are completely harmless to you, but it is like a universal way that we do to ensure a clear broth and a less gamey broth. In Western cuisine, you'd make a float to make a consomme. This is like our version of that, but I think it's easier. <laughs> so after all this is done, your aromatics are roasted, your proteins have been cooked. Now it's the part where it's just like assemble into the Instapot or the Ninja Foodi, and that is pretty much it. This is Chinese style cured ham. It's the closest thing that you can get to Jinhua ham in the United States. I highly recommend you find some out and use it in all of your soups. And for those who don't know, Jinhua ham is like a really super premium Chinese ham that you can really only get over there. I'm not really sure that we can really get it here. It's almost like the Chinese answer to Iberico. But unlike Iberico, it's mostly used as an ingredient to like the best soups and stocks you're going to use. I have seen it served on its own like with some honey steamed I think at some really nice restaurants, but I think I've most commonly seen it um, served in this way as a component to really really premium soups. 
So yeah, we've put everything in there, including some white pepper. That's what this was. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that before. One hour and 30 minutes left alone as opposed to five hours on the stove where you have to watch it all the time. Pretty good deal. We'll be back after the side quest. So in this dish, I wanted to use these purple rice noodles to make this character from an anime called SK8 The Infinity. Now it's called SK8 The Infinity and not Skate The Infinity because both the anime distributor that commissioned me for this piece, as well as the animator that made the anime itself, said it's SK8 The Infinity, not Skate The Infinity. There was a huge discourse about it. Anime fans are very interesting. So taking inspiration off of his clown makeup, as well as like there's a duality to this guy, he's actually really sweet even though he's super menacing in this persona. I decided to make a garlic chive oil using my thermal mix. I used to use my thermal mix a lot, but then I realized not a lot of people can like afford this tiny little German death machine, so I don't use it that much anymore simply because most people can't afford to get one. But when I was running a secret illegal restaurant out of my house, I would use it all the time because that was like having a whole nother person in your kitchen. It was amazing. So a Chinese garlic chive oil for his eye makeup and for his orange hair, I wanted to make a coconut carrot puree. Literally just sauteing some carrots in some Jamaican curry powder. Always fry your curry before you use it. Curry is generally distributed as a raw powder, which is why when you add it directly to things, it kind of has this weird taste. Always cook, fry, or roast your curry before serving. Oh, I, I also put five spice in this. It was very sweet, I remember that. So I'm just softening them up in my wok right now and then I'm going to put them in a Vitamix to get it into a really, really smooth puree that we will use kind of like as a supplementary sauce for the dish. Because it was so thoroughly roasted, um, it ended up being more of a brown paste than any kind of golden orange or yellow. But because curry powder is so strong in color, all I had to do was add just like the tiniest bit of coconut cream to the puree and immediately that like lightened up the entire thing. So just like, it's very much like painting, adding in a little bit of ingredients to like alter the colors of the rest of them. It, it's very much the same process. I had used the rest of the coconut cream to kind of try to make this white face paint stuff. Um, so I thought, okay, coconut cream, a little bit of salt, sugar, lime, to get those Southeast Asian flavor profiles in there. Um, and then I'll just add a little bit of cornstarch slurry to thicken it all up into a sauce. Well, it made it look like which was totally not my intention. I don't think anybody really intends for any kind of sauce to look like Eventually though, I did end up with like a creamy white consistency that I did like, and now I'm just seeing how I want to plate the sauces, seeing if how the colors mix together. I wanted to do kind of like a Jackson Pollock type thing because let's face it, a lot of chefs love to do that because most chefs can't draw. We do a lot of splatter art because we can't draw. And also if you are a chef who can draw, you. Just be good at one thing. Why do you have to be good at cooking and be able to draw? That is sociopath behavior. You see on these shows like Chef's Table and stuff like that and you see like this 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 fancy cook making these beautiful renderings in a moleskin notebook of these dishes that look like so gorgeous like pieces of art. Like just be good at one thing. That's that's enough. That's enough. So here's like the rough process of how I came and put the dishes together. It actually tasted really good. You had like a garlicky green sauce, a super curry, bright, vibrant, and sweet like carrot sauce. And then this was all covered in fennel pollen and edible flowers because he also owned a flower shop because of course he does. It was definitely one of my more creatively fulfilling uh, anime dishes that I had done because it was like totally conceptual. I had total support from the distributor to do it. And it was just like a lot of fun to do. I never actually got to finish the anime itself. So anybody who actually did finish the anime, like please let me know in the comments, did these guys ever end up Returning back from the side quest now, we are seeing how this goes. Naturally, I am checking the broth for clarity using a wooden spoon that you wouldn't be able to check the broth for clarity with a wooden spoon. I don't really know what I was doing in that shot. 
but you can see here is it restaurant quality clear broth i would say no there's a little bit too much residual matter there otherwise no this is perfect for the home. I was blown away with how much more intensely flavored this was compared to the traditionally made stuff. This one, it both had Jinhua ham and a smoked ham hock in there. It tasted almost like a finished broth, which, you know, if you watered it down, it would be more easily used as a base stock for anything. And the yield that it provided, I think it, I got four quarts, yeah, four quarts out of it, which is more than enough for the average person. I think this was very worthwhile doing and much more worthwhile doing for you to try at home as opposed to the traditional method where it would take all freaking day. The only downside is with the traditional method in the last half hour of the stock as it's cooking, you're supposed to add like dried scallops or dried shrimps into it to add like a seafood element to the stock. Um, you can't really do that in a pressure cooker. You'd have to like remove everything, put it all in a pot and then like do it all over again with just that extra step. But other than that, I think this is totally worth doing. It provides you a lot of stock and this is what it actually looks like when it's cooled down. Like look how concentrated that is. The leftover meat after you're done with the stock has been pretty much completely spent. You'll have to add a little bit of salt, but if you wanna use it for like sandwiches or anything, like you totally can. And one thing you have to finally remember is that this is still just an ingredient at the end of the day. You still have to do things to turn a stock into a broth, adding more ingredients to it, aromatic spices or whatnot to add that finishing touch. I turned it into a dumpling soup and it was delicious. I'll put some links in the descriptions for other recipes that I've used that use this kind of stock, but you can use this stock in anything. And of course you can make a whole bunch of this stuff in advance and then store it in the freezer. While this might seem like a lot of work for just one basic ingredient, it is worthwhile while to do or try at least to have in your repertoire because you know you don't pull out your showstoppers every day but it's always good to have something in your skill set when it comes time to f some up which is exactly what i hope you guys do with this